Dusk's release in late 2018 may have kicked off the boomer shooter renaissance, but there were a number of other games around the same time that were looking to tickle the same nostalgic itch. One such was Project Warlock, a small-scale indie shooter developed by Buckshot Software that took inspiration directly from Wolfenstein 3D and iterated on it with some light RPG mechanics and broader level design. It was a great game, especially considering its price and the small size of its team. What I didn't expect would happen in the years following is that Wolf Likes would emerge as a style of retro shooters. While Wolfenstein 3D is monumentally important in the overall landscape of not only FPS titles, but 3D games as a whole, it doesn't really hold a candle to anything original developer id Software created after. The game is simplistic to a fault, and while that was understandable for a game in 1992, it doesn't make sense to limit yourself so much in the 21st century. Still, that brings us to today's subject, Extranium. When I initially looked at some footage and screenshots of this new indie shooter, I figured I was in for some Doom-like action. The visual style is certainly more cartoonish, but the guns are reminiscent of id Software staples, and the enemies had some clear parallels to Hell's Hordes of Demons. Little did I know that this shooter was a riff on Wolfenstein 3D, though obviously with much bigger levels. That might sound bad considering how I just dunked on Wolf 3D, but Extranium manages to be a fun little game that has enough of its own identity to stand out from the crowd while also succumbing to some of the same problems id Software's legendary games suffered from. The plot of Extranium is almost entirely irrelevant to the gameplay, but I'll read in the Steam store page description since it's fun enough. Thanks to your high resilience and your even higher scores on the Universal Weapon Handling Assessment, you were lucky enough to get hired as a security guard for the top secret Project Extranium. You had no idea what this project was all about, but you certainly didn't sign up for a total overrun of the facilities by alien looking monstrosities. That's very clearly derived from Doom, and with good reason. You don't need much of a story in a boomer shooter. These are games created and designed to push the envelope of gameplay with story being the mere explanation for why you're in a certain location or how enemies infested everything. Extranium doesn't break new ground here, and that's perfectly fine. It does not need to. Most of Extranium plays out exactly like a shooter from the Golden Age would. You start a level with a basic weapon, traverse labyrinthine walkways while shooting enemies, collect weapons and armor, and then exit through a door onto the next level. Extranium is broken up into three episodes, with six main levels and two hidden ones in each episode. Being built in a similar fashion to Wolfenstein 3D, every level in Extranium takes place on a flat plane. While the game is clearly using a true 3D engine unlike id Software's granddaddy of the genre, most of the 3D elements are used for distinguishing locations from one another. It's not impossible to get lost in Extranium, but you have a much harder time doing so than Wolfenstein 3D, since there are clear landmarks in each level. Seeing a pit of lava with a bridge over it helps guide you more than a flat color on the ground and ceiling ever could. Where this game starts to differentiate from the classics is with regard to secret hunting. While almost every hidden goodie is accessed by pressing use on wall textures, those secrets aren't merely extra ammo or more health. Well they are, but not in the Wolfenstein fashion. Extranium lets players grab permanent upgrades to health, armor, and ammo that will carry over into future levels and across each episode. It's not necessary to surviving the game, even on the gruesome difficulty, but it certainly helps. Another neat change is that the secret levels are hidden behind data disks. Data disks are another collectible hidden within the different levels that act as keys for the secret exits. I don't recall the specific number each door requires, but the first exit will necessitate a single disk, while the final one asks for 18. You can collect these from any of the levels you want, and then go back to unlock secret levels in a specific episode giving a pseudo-metroidvania vibe to the game. If that wasn't enough, Extranium is also hiding powerful weapon upgrades behind these secrets, further diversifying it from the pack. The default arsenal is full of all the cornerstones of any good FPS. You have a pump-action shotgun, grenade launcher, machine gun, plasma gun, SMG, and knife. Each of these can be upgraded by finding their corresponding replacement in a secret location. You won't actually need to do this though, because the combat in Extranium is balanced around the starting arsenal. For a good portion of the game, I was using the shotgun almost exclusively, and it started to get a little stale. The enemies here don't reinvent the wheel, and they have clear analogs to what's in Doom. I don't know their specific names, but you have stand-ins for the zombie men, shotgunners, pinky demons, lost souls, etc. They're all animated wonderfully, and I do enjoy the sprite work, but this is a very tried and true roster that doesn't quite excite me. 
The same can be said of the level design as well. Each episode has a central theme, and there is certainly much more going on than in Wolfenstein 3D, but Extranium eventually starts to feel samey by the end. There is only so much you can do without a Z-axis, and while I'm shocked that Extranium is notably different than Project Warlock, the last couple of levels are sort of the same thing as one another. That doesn't stop secret levels from being homages to FPS classics, including shoutouts to Doom and Duke Nukem 3D, which is just plain awesome to see. Saying anything else about Extranium is mostly unnecessary though. The game feel is solid, movement is fast, and the guns are fun. The enemies are placed well, and later encounters can drift into chaotic brawls. Anything else you would need to know could be found by playing other classic shooters. Maybe that makes Extranium a bit redundant, but for only $12 it's not a bad way to spend 5-6 to six hours, or more if you go for some secrets which are deviously hidden. While that might make Extranium sound like a waste, I don't mean to imply that it is. The goal of this game seems to have been to replicate the classics while not breaking the mold, and developer David Jalbert has achieved that. The only real drawback is that we're inundated with options for retro FPS action in 2024. Still, if you like your pixels chunky and your action bloody, I would say that Extranium is worth the time and effort.